Welcome back to BNG Hockey, where it's always black and gold. The Boston Bruins are looking to shake things up this offseason, and that means there's going to be quite a few trade rumors around the team. Now, most of the time, it's 90% speculation, and the team's not even really interested, and writers just think it would be a good fit, or the guy that you're talking about never even ends up on the team. So it's not really worth making a video every time the Boston Bruins come up in a rumor, or somebody thinks a player is going to be traded here. But when that somebody is an insider like Elliot Friedman mentioning your team, it's pretty legit. And this name has been popping up quite a bit centered around the Bruins, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. That name is Oliver Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson is a pretty big name in the NHL, but for those of you who don't know, he's the captain of the Arizona Coyotes, he's a left-shot defenseman who's played in 723 games, totaling 364 points. Last season in 66 games, he put up 30 points. Now, most of you might be looking at those numbers and saying he doesn't sound like a superstar, but we do have to remember he spent his entire career with the Arizona Coyotes, who haven't been so great even when they have been great. Now, the biggest concern with Ekman Larson, and probably the biggest thing holding him back from actually coming to Boston, is his cap hit. He is signed for seven more years, and he's 29 years old, so it's not the best length there with his age, and he's making $8.25 million. So he would be the highest paid Bruin, and you'd have him until the age of 36. Now, do I want to be paying a 36-year-old or even a 35-year-old $8 million? Not really, but sometimes that's what you have to do, especially if the Bruins are looking to contend next season. You look at a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning, they have a guy like Ryan McDonough signed to a huge contract. Do they want to pay McDonough when he gets older? No, but McDonough's playing great for them right now, and they're headed to the Stanley Cup Finals. So if the Bruins really want to get back to the Finals and are looking to be good now, you need to start making moves that make you better now and not worry about the future. Ekman Larson is a really good player, and I think he has quite a bit of upside, even at age 29, if he's able to get away from the Coyotes. We've seen plenty of guys go there and have okay careers. Shane Doan could be a Hall of Famer, and he spent his entire career there. But we see guys like Taylor Hall go there, Phil Kessel go there, just to name a couple of stars who went there recently, and they do terrible. So I feel like Ekman Larson is really held back because he's on that team. He can play big minutes. He's the kind of guy who can give you 28, 29, maybe even 30 minutes a night if you really wanted him to. He can play in any situation. He's 6'2". He's a little bit physical, so he's not worried about killing penalties or getting into battles in the corner. He's a great power play guy probably even better than Tory Krug. Now, a lot of you would say, if you're going to pay Ekman Larson $8 million, why not just pay Tory Krug $8 million? But I think Ekman Larson is a much better defenseman. I'm willing to sacrifice some points if he doesn't get shoved around and can battle in front of his own net and play well defensively, which sometimes I think Tory Krug is a liability in his own end. And I don't really care how many power play points he has because he's playing with Pasternak, Marchand, Bergeron. Is it really Tory Krug? Tory Krug is a great player, but he's not worth $8 million. And Ekman Larson definitely is, in my opinion. I love having a guy who can play in all situations and has some size. If you have a D pair of Ekman Larson and Charlie McAvoy, you have a top five D pair, in my opinion. I did talk a little bit about the Bruins being interested in Ekman Larson in my off-season outlook video, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. And I said something similar to that where I really just think Ekman Larson would thrive here. Now, as far as what it would take to acquire Ekman Larson, I'm not really sure what the Coyotes are looking for. They're going through a strange situation down there. Their ownership group is having a tough time because of the pandemic, and this is going to be more and more common, especially with lower-level franchises such as the Coyotes. They can never really sell out their rink anyway, and when you can't have fans and you're not selling merch and you're not selling food or tickets or really even games at this point, they got eliminated by the Colorado Avalanche really early on in the playoffs, so you can't even get the TV money. They just don't have the money to pay these guys or spend to the cap. They don't really care if they're going to win or lose because they just care about staying in the league and being able to afford the team. So pretty much anyone who's making some serious money down there, whether it's Phil Kessel, whether it's Ekman Larson, maybe even Derek Stepan, they're looking to move them. So the Bruins can take advantage of that. The Bruins have plenty of money and they can afford to spend to the cap and their ownership group can afford to spend to the cap. So 
So I don't know if you can rob Ekman Larson from them. That would be fantastic if the Bruins can just take advantage of taking that big salary off their hands, and that's really all they need. Maybe a first-round pick and couple of prospects gets the deal done. I would be interested in giving them a guy like Trent Frederick, who I'm not really sure is going to develop all the way. They probably want a defenseman if they're going to move their best defenseman and their captain. So maybe you give them a prospect like a Vakaninen. I wouldn't love that. I think Vakaninen is going to be a good player for the Bruins. But if it gets me Ekman Larson, I would much rather have him, even if it's for less years. Obviously, Vakaninen is still really young and could become something. Maybe you can get them to bite on a guy like Zabor who's definitely not going to be worth that first round draft pick, but could still be something, especially if he goes to a place like Arizona and gets some playing time. I don't think he's really going to get a chance here in Boston. Maybe they want a guy like John Moore, who has some term. Now, you're not going to do John Moore for Ackman Larson one for one, but if you throw a package of a first round pick, a prospect, and John Moore, the Coyotes get a guy who can play at the NHL level, is signed for a couple of years at a really good cap hit. And I really think that they're just looking for guys who are younger, cheaper, and can come into the lineup. And if they're good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. I don't think the Coyotes really care about winning right now. It's more of just making sure they can afford the team, which is a really strange situation. So it's going to be interesting to see who gets moved out of there. And another big player for them is Taylor Hall, who they're definitely not going to be able to afford. But the Bruins might be interested in him as well, and Ekman Larson could help us. It seems like decades ago, but Taylor Hall was traded to the Arizona Coyotes during the regular season. He didn't play so great for them, and he didn't play in that many games with the shortened regular season and the early elimination from the playoffs. But he looked pretty good playing in the top six for them, and I hope he would develop a relationship with the captain, Oliver Ekman Larson. If those guys are buddies, and I'm not sure that they are, and I haven't seen this anywhere, this is pure speculation on my part, and the Bruins are interested in not only adding Ekman Larson through a trade, but signing Taylor Hall to finally fix their top six problem, I think the Bruins really just need to stop signing guys and trading for guys who are mid-level guys and trying to force them into the top six. Kasha is a great player, but you need a Taylor Hall level player. So if you get a couple of best buddies and Ekman Larson and Taylor Hall, and Ekman Larson can convince Hall to sign here, there's going to be a big bidding war for Taylor Hall. Even though he didn't have his best season, nothing close to his MVP season, he's still going to get paid. He's the best forward by far coming out of this free agency class, so it's going to take some convincing. But if they both want to win, you'd get two stars who are motivated, playing together, if they like playing together, and they're on a Stanley Cup level roster with the Boston Bruins. I think that is great. If you're Boston and you're looking to re-energize this team, get a different look, and looking to contend with a team like Tampa Bay, getting not only Ekman Larson, but also Taylor Hall puts you a lot closer to the talent level of the Tampa Bay Lightning. So let's see. Maybe Ekman Larson helps us in a couple of ways and helps us bring in a top six forward so that we can really be a force next season. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think the Bruins should trade for Oliver Ekman Larson? Are you concerned about his cap hit? Do you think he could help us bring a guy like Taylor Hall in from free agency? Leave that down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big like, and if you haven't already, subscribe.